Welcome to the Daily Devotionals podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Good afternoon, Redeemer family and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our epistle reading for the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. The epistle reading for the 25th Sunday after Pentecost is Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 to 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own, For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for a man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once, to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Don't you love it when you can do a job once and the thing or the situation is fixed and you don't have to do it again? And that's what we need to think about Jesus' suffering and his death and his resurrection. It was a job that needed to be done once and only once. There's uh, this false idea in, in some denominations that every time communion is celebrated, it's a repeated sacrifice. It's a sacrifice again, so that it has to happen over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. But this passage makes it clear that's not the case at all. As a matter of fact, it even says that you know, Jesus would have had to do this for ages, you know, for year after year, for ages past, from the beginning of time. But that's not it. Jesus' power that he gained by his suffering and his death and his resurrection was a task that needed to be done once because the enormity and the power of that sacrifice is beyond our comprehension. Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, the fullness of the Godhead, died for us, lived a perfect life, a righteous life, a holy life, and then died for us. A sacrifice made once that doesn't need to be repeated because of not only who it was, but the enormity of the value and the power and the glory of that sacrifice. Jesus did it for all, one time. Priests of the Old Testament had to do it over and over again with animal blood. Jesus does it once for all to save us. And then, you know, there's so much more here in this verse you know, think about what else it says here in verse um, 26. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Once for all. And then 27. And as it is appointed for a man to die once, and after that comes judgment. There's a couple of really important hidden gems just in that short phrase. It's appointed for man to die once. 
there is no such thing as reincarnation. We die once, that's it. We don't get reincarnated and die again and again and again in different forms. We die once. And then we face judgment. Each and every one of us will face the judgment seat. But the good news for every believer in Jesus Christ is that he died once to pay for all sin and to wash it out of our lives and to cover us with his righteousness and to present us before God as pure and holy through that sacrifice. And that's where the writer to the Hebrews goes next in verse 28. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, offered once to bear the sins of many, they're gone. Judgment will not so much be a judgment because Jesus has already paid the price. The judgment will be either a vindication or worse, condemnation for all eternity. Vindication by the blood of Jesus or condemnation because of unbelief. But when Jesus comes again the second time, uh, the rest of verse 28 will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Every Christian, every believer in Jesus Christ should be eagerly waiting for Jesus to come again so that we can be with him and we can experience the fullness of joy and that making all things right and experience the fullness of the glory that awaits us in Christ, free from every sorrow, sadness, pain, suffering that ever could be or ever will be, free from all of that to live with him. So as we hear these words, we should find great comfort and solace. Jesus was sacrificed once. We're set free from sin, and we wait eagerly for his return that we might experience the joy of comfort of paradise forever in his presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your spirit. Remind us of what Jesus has done, the once for all sacrifice for sin and that we have that promise and that hope, and we eagerly wait for him to come again. Help us. Help us to remember the power of the cross and appreciate the gift that comes in his resurrection, a life with you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow or on Thursday for Thursday's devotion, eagerly wait for him. Paradise awaits when he returns. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.